and get another cup of coffee or whatever while we're conducting the meeting. I want to welcome each of you officially this evening to our 2018 Data Point Historical Society annual meeting. And we have some very important people that we want to introduce. You're all important, especially the members of the Data Point Historical Society. But of course, there are special people among us, and among them are Helen Pierce. And where is Helen? Could you see it, Helen? She's our official. <laughs> Helen, when did you come to Data Point? When was your first visit to Data Point? 1947. There you go. And you got a job in the restaurant where Jack's restaurant is now, and what was it called then? Okay, so anybody who wants to beat that, who was here before 1947, would you raise your hand and tell us what you were doing here in 1947? <laughs> in addition to Helen, we have uh, our council person, Deborah Lewis, with us. Deborah, would you stand, please? Thank you. And Sergio Prince, Prince is here. He's representing Supervisor Lisa Bartlett. He is the community relations advisor for the 5th district. Sergio. Special guests include Regina and Jim Barnes, who are here from Ventura. Where are Regina and Jim? <laughs> Regina was on our board of directors before she up and moved to Ventura and uh, left those, their darling little Woodruff College cottage on Copper Lantern. And then uh, uh, we have some personal friends here. Kathy Sangster from Newport Beach is here. And, and she comes usually to our scholarship fundraisers in June. Um, we also have Arnie and Ben Chambliss, longtime friends of ours here. Wait, we're okay. And Anne and Henry Bradley are here from Paisley, Scotland. We were fortunate enough to meet Anne and Henry through Artie and Ben, and um, Henry is sometimes referred to as the Bard of Scotland, or the Bard of Paisley, and he has uh, composed a little poem for us tonight, so, Henry? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Barbara. Uh, Barbara said that uh, I'm known as the Bard, as in Robbie Burns, she, that's the way she's pronouncing it, B-A-R-D. Most people who know me say, yeah, Bard, it should be B-A-R-R-E-D. <laughs> anyway, good evening, everyone. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in Dana Point. Uh, it's not our first time here, we've been here quite a few times uh, visiting our good friends Barbara and Keith. And this all came about through Ben and Andy, uh, a young couple who we met in Bonnie, Scotland, uh, way back in 1983. And yesterday we were attending a birthday party for other good friends of Ben and Andy. Uh, Willa, who you all know very well, who received the Recipients Award last year, and her beau, Pete, who is also uh, an eminent member of this society. So with great pleasure, uh, I'm going to read this poem which was uh, given the name by Ardy, and for those of you who have a clue what I'm saying just now, Ben will only be too happy to give you a translation at the end of the evening. <laughs> so this is Henry's Road to Southern California and our friends. First let me explain who we are. We're not local, but hail from afar. To this state, California is so great, for the last 35 years, all caused by fate. 
We first met our modern city friends on a train in 83 in Bonnie, Scotland, where they bicycled for six weeks with so glee. We had invited them to visit with us and stay overnight, unaware of the consequences which turned out so bright. You guys must visit us in old USA, in Orange City, California, where it's sunny all day. Next year was an Olympic year to be held in Cal State, and we had decided previously to make it a date. So off we went on our first trip to the States, myself, my wife, Anne, and Elizabeth, her maid. Three weeks in New Jersey, then off to San Fran, touring California and Nevada, Liz, me, and Anne. Then I meet with our new buddies, Ardy and Ben, lending us their dats and Z, or as we would say in Scotland, Z, for occasions now and then. To go to the Olympic dressage was just one, and US baseball versus Chinese Taipei, which was fun. At this point, I would just like to say, I think that the, the baseball was an event which had been specially staged. Uh, United States were maybe hoping that it was a, a sporting event that could be included in future uh, Olympic Games. Unfortunately, Chinese Taipei won, and that might be the reason why they decided not to have it. <coughs> then, since then, we have met every two years, alternating between Scotland and the United States with no fears. We have travelled much in your country, so vast and so grand, and all over Europe to many a land. But today, well, uh, this was, if you get up, try and remember that this was actually read last night for Willa's birthday. So today is January the 23rd, 2018. We have come for a birthday for a lady, a dream. Willa Sardane, a legend around here, and Pete, her beau, who is also revered. And finally, with Hardy and Ben, we have met other friends dear, Barbara and Keith, who also live here. It's thanks to you all who have given us your heart, which we will treasure back in our foreign part. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So when we visit Scotland, we hang out with Henry and Anne, who show us around. I want to thank uh, those of you who came early and enjoyed with me the tour of the new church, the new sanctuary here at Gloria Day. Um, Pastor David Matson uh, took us on a tour, which is wonderful. And if you didn't happen to work that into your schedule this evening, you may want to do it in the future. It was really uh, a beautifully executed new building to fit into their um, campus here. And we really appreciate that. We will begin our meeting, uh, which of course we must have an annual meeting every year. And uh, the first part of business for an annual meeting is the reading of the January 25th, 2017 minutes. We can have our secretary, Heidi Hyde, read those minutes, or we can have a motion to um, dispense with the minutes. What is your pleasure? <laughs> Terry, you... Oh, well, you go ahead and move, and we'll have Dave second it. Move. Okay, we're going to postpone it, and David has seconded it. So the... Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we will dispense with the meeting minutes, but Heidi has them ready for anyone who would like to read them um, or meet with us in the uh, museum to do so. Our treasurer was here, but she had to leave. She had one evening to spend with her son who's visiting from out of town. And she's left the treasurer's report with our vice president of membership, Marsha Russo. Marsha, thank you. Okay. Our income for 2017 was just over $19,000. This is comprised primarily of dues and merchandise sales, especially our historical photos. Our expenditures for 2017 were just over $29,800. This includes the $9,000 balance of our pledge to the Hobie Memorial Statue which was due when the city approved the site. 
Our balance is $47,559.84. We also have reserves of 20,000 in short-term CDs. Submiss respectively submitted Kate Wallace Treasurer. Before you sit down, I'd just like you to say a few words because one of those incomes that she mentioned was the dues. And Marcia, would you please tell our members how important dues are? Dues are our backbone. That's how we really can maintain all of our um, everyday expenditures. So um, dues are due now. So you'd be so kind as to just mail them to us, or if you happen to have a checkbook, you can just give me a check tonight, and that'll be great. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. Before we have the nominating report, I also want to mention that each of you brought a dish, helped set up the meeting, Max Brown, who is not here this evening, organized the supplies, and unfortunately his mother is having open heart surgery this afternoon, which was totally unexpected a few days ago, and so he could not be here. But we thank Max for his help, Bob Minty for helping set up earlier before the rest of us were here, Keith also, and Bill Bamatri, who all helped bring things over. So thank you very much. And we would like your help in cleaning up afterward and making certain that you take your dishes home with you and put your um, place away in the trash. We really appreciate that. So thank you in advance for that. Now, Joel Bishop, our parliamentarian, is going to uh, conduct our nominating report and installation. Joel. I'm actually, I'm actually going to use this thing I put up here. Um, the annual nomination for officers and appointed uh, members of the board have been sent to the uh, membership via email, and I have received no additional input. So I will at this time close the nominations. The slate for our officers being presented to the membership for uh, Reappointment are Bob Minty, who's the third vice president, and Nancy Jenkins, who's the correspondence secretary. If you two could both stand, please. I'd like to uh, call for the question on the nomination of these two members to the board. Is there a second? There's a second. There's a second, Heidi. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you. You can be seated. And then additionally, the appointed members of the board Elizabeth Bobatri is not here. Uh, Judy Anderson is. Um, Rob Howarth is not here. And Terry Walsh is. So if uh, Terry and Judy can stand, we will move the nomination of uh, these four folks to our board. Is there a second? Second. Second, second is made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, I'd like the, the four members of the board to please come up front for a quick swearing in. And uh, we'll move on to the more fun parts of the agenda. Judy, 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 Judy. Come over here so we can get you on the video right here in front of this thing. There you go. Judy, there you go. Okay, please. Raise your right hand and answer I will to the following questions. Will you? Okay, good. Um, each of you is pledging to perform the duties of your office in order to carry out the mission of the Dana Point Historical Society. Will each of you, as a member of the Dana Point Historical Society Board of Directors, promise to perform the duties of your office according to the bylaws and strive to preserve Dana Point's heritage, its buildings, documents, photos, and artifacts, to uphold their mission and educate the public about the history of the area, to identify new information about the past, new information about the past, and to encourage the preservation of historic buildings, land terms throughout the city of Data Point for current and future generations. Each of you will please respond, I will. I will. I will. Excellent. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you. Have, to have a very successful <laughs> Thank you.
Barbara. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. <coughs> the state of the historical society report, we really have accounted for our activities in the November, December, and January newsletters, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, we always can use more time, more of your time in the museum for museum docents. We're fortunate to have directors who serve as docents. In addition, Mary Crowell, Robin Valles, and Jim Poet also are among our faithful docents. So if that's something that interests you, we'd love to talk to you about it. The um, activities that we had this year, especially our cruise into history, celebrating our 30th anniversary in September and the field trip to the USS Iowa and the LA Harbor Fire Department were some of our fun activities, uh, especially this fall. And um, we hope that you, those of you who came to those enjoyed, enjoyed it and that others of you will join us for other activities if you couldn't make it. Um, Jim Miller was here earlier. I hope you saw him. Uh, Jim, of course, runs Coffee Importers, and he's suffering from bronchitis right now, and so he didn't stay for long. But he did want to say that he was very much um, honored to receive the Pat Plepler Award when he received it, and he's sorry that he couldn't stay for the entire meeting. I do want to mention, uh, or ask you, if you saw that he was chosen as one of Orange County's 100 most influential people by the Orange County Register for 2017. Did you happen to see that article? And um, the quote was that he was instrumental in making the unknown of the decades-long awaited 200 million Dana Point Harbor revitalization less scary for Dana Point Harbor merchants through information regular updates, and rallying when needed. He was recognized for his influence in that, those efforts. So when you see Jim at Coffee Importers or wherever, and if you haven't had a chance to congratulate him, you might want to do that. Another um, announcement I wanted to make is that cultural anthropologist Stephen O'Neill is going to speak on the Actually, then I can never pronounce that. Uh, somebody oh, help me. The Indians, Ashman. the Wanenyo Indians, the correct name is Ashman. Thank you. It's logic like you're sort of sneezing. Um, and there is a community stories project that he is delivering on Tuesday, January 30th at 5 p.m. at the San Juan Capistrano Library. So if you're interested in that, I have a flyer here if you want to take down the information. Um, and that is 5 p.m. On, on January 30th. He's also going to offer two other topics at libraries, the Goody Hills Tech Library, February 24th and Sunday, March 25th at the Laguna Nigel Library. So that sounds like something that would really be interesting to many of us. Our February 28th meeting is coming up, and Bob Minty, our program vice president, has arranged for Eric Plunkett to speak on his research as to where along the bluffs the drovers actually threw hides down to the beach. He's been doing research from uh, information at the San Juan Capistrano Mission and other sources, so that's something to look forward to. February 28th, and we will have a wine reception afterward in the museum. We would love to have you volunteer for the Festival of Wales um, booth. If that's something you would like to do March 3rd and 4th and March 10th and 11th. We're also looking for a classic or vintage vehicle for the Saturday, March 3rd parade. If you know someone that would love to uh, have their vehicle in the parade, their classic car or uh, Woody and Terry Walsh will be organizing or um, yeah organizing us for walking tours. They're held the first weekend, second weekend they're only by appointment. And we will investigate having a home tour this year, a Woodruff home tour, and 
determine if we have people interested in offering their homes for the tour and or volunteering to have the tour. We've had historic photographs recently donated to us from the Anna G. Walters Marguerite Guy family. And Anna G. Walters was the lady who built the first commercial building in Dana Point, which is now where Coastal Kitchen is located. And so we have some neat photos that we hope to have developed and displayed in the museum within the next month or so. Now, um, we also hope that the two empty Woodruff buildings that are near there, one across the street and the old Up Sports building, we hope those buildings will be restored and put to good use. And we do get comments about people worrying and asking what is going to happen to those two buildings. Now Bruce Bill, where's Bruce, who is our Oceanic Director, is going to come up and say a few words about the status of the South Coast development and the Hobie Memorial statue. Bruce? Well, I'll stay here and make it more brief. The biggest part of the statue is now Shepherd's Foundry is being converted into bronze as we speak. <laughs> So progress is being made in that area. Is there any other announcements for the good of the society? <coughs> or any, anything that we need to know about right now? Barbara? Well, I'm getting there. Okay, um, then I'm, we're going to go on to have a presentation of a memorandum by Sergio Prince, again, Community Relations Advisor to Orange County 5th District Supervisor Lisa Bartlett, and Nancy Jenkins, Chair of the Dana Point Arts and Cultural Commission. So, Sergio and Nancy, would you like to come up, please? <coughs> Thank you, Barbara. How many people remember Colleen Swan? Oh, we have Colleen Schwann. Colleen Schwann. How many people remember? She started the founder of the Lawn Chair and Picnic Society in Heritage Park. Now, do you remember her? She was this vibrant lady, redhead. And she was a singer, and she sang in a lot of places. And she performed a lot in uh, San Juan, Capistrano. And really a person of note. So we are very happy. And she was the second founder for the society. Harry Asuko was number one for the Dana Point Historical Society, and Colleen was the second founder. And so in her honor, we have, and I'll just, I can pass this around too, but this is a plaque that due to our mayor, our former mayor and our councilwoman, and had this discussion, they have opened a policy where it's a long procedure, not easy, but we were able to go through that. And we now have a plaque at the bottom that's going to be put on this bench in Heritage Park in her name. And it says to Colleen Swan, September 14th, 1928 to July 25th, 2017, founder of the Lawn Chair and Picnic Society, and an advocate of culture and the arts. So I'd like for all of you to know she was very active in many aspects of the community. And along this same frame of reference, Sergio. Thank you, Nancy. <clears throat> Can you all hear me OK? Yes. yes. So um, I regret I did not know Colleen personally, but I do receive your newsletter, I believe it's called The Droger, is that correct? The News Droger. The News Droger. And uh, I don't know if you send it to me or... Uh, well, Max Brown, our editor, or Joel. For whatever reason, I get it, and, and, I, and I read it. And I was um, reading it uh, early last fall, and I read about Colleen and her passing. And it was clear that she was a very special person and very highly thought of certainly by 
by you, um, you guys, and the community. And so I mentioned it to Supervisor Bartlett, and she knew Colleen, and the supervisors have an opportunity to adjourn the Board of Supervisors meeting in memory of someone um, who had passed away that um, was from their district, a, con a constituent. And so I, I asked uh, Barbara if it would be all right if the supervisor adjourned the Board of Supervisors meeting in her memory, and, and she said that would be. And so um, on October 17, uh, we did that, the Supervisor Bartlett did do that, and the adjournment in memoriam, which it, which it is called, reads, in memoriam, the Orange County Board of Supervisors extends its deepest sympathy to you in the passing of your loved one, Colleen Schwant, in whose memory all members adjourn in tribute and reverence at its meeting of October 17, 2017. And it's signed collectively by the Orange County Board of Supervisors. And uh, so we're happy to do it. Thank you, Sergio, for bringing this this evening. I did receive uh, an email from Bruce Schwant, Colleen's son, and he said, thanks all so much for inviting me to this event. I know my mom would have appreciated the recognition. I'm sorry I will be unable to attend tonight's meeting, but please extend my thanks to all for your gracious gesture. And our corresponding secretary, newly installed again, Nancy <coughs> Jenkins, will um, send this and the um, information on the bench that she's showing you right now to Bruce for his family. And Nancy, I'll put this back up here for you again. So before we uh, adjourn the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and then have Bill Bamatri um, talk about the Pat Plepler Award. We do have uh, former recipients of the Pat Kleckler Award, and um, hopefully I have a list of their names. Paul Peck received it in 2009, 2010 Laura Anderson, 2011 Pat Fairbanks, 2012 Nancy Jenkins, 2013 Terry Walsh, 2014 Jim Miller, who was here earlier this evening, 2015, Dick Dietmeyer, and Dick right now is in uh, therapy up in Los Angeles in the hospital, right? Yeah, physical therapy for, for recent surgery. 2016, Wayne Rayfield, and Wayne sent his regrets this evening. His niece is still in the hospital. And in 2017, it was Will Porter, and Will Porter is here this evening. So we will have that in a moment, but first I need to uh, adjourn we need to adjourn the business meeting. Is there a motion that the meeting be adjourned? <coughs> David moves that the meeting is adjourned. Is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, say sign. So now I'm going to introduce Bill Montre, and while he's coming up here, I wanted to let you know that Elizabeth and Bill organized this presentation. Elizabeth is visiting her mother right now in Cotesmore, uh, Rutland, yes? How's that? Cut, cut, cut is more. Cut is more. Okay. So I'll let you explain that. And um, what else can I do to help you here, Bill? Uh, I think what we'll do is uh, it's going to be kind of a joint presentation. So if we can get Terry to come on up here and also uh, Jeff Rosler that are here. I'm sorry, I didn't see Jeff come in, so I didn't introduce him. I think it's really fitting, uh, just uh, kind of a side note, uh, our uh, honoree, Keith Johannes. And actually, Keith, why don't you come on up here and you can stand on the kid side over here. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi. Colleen Swat uh, was a, a great. Uh, name from the past for me on the first city council as at first city council we had people coming up to us all the time you got to do this you got to do that Colleen came up one afternoon uh, down in, in the Dana Point uh, downtown and a 
approached me, quiet, soft voice, and said, you know, we need more cultural things. That's I'm sorry, I was doing a quiet, soft voice. <laughs> we need some more cultural, and she was so persuasive, and just a, a, a tremendous person, which brings us to Keith. Very much the same personality, very quiet, unassuming, self-deprecating, uh, and just gets things done, and does is involved in uh, so many different uh, things. Uh, I think all of us will see him around in, in the various issues that many of you are involved in uh, uh, separately. He uh, attends many of the planning commissions, city council meetings, and then he puts together his email to those on his list and gets the, uh, the word out to them. And he can, you can see his fruits of labor all around town. Terry's going to talk about how he's put his stamp on him. And, uh, and also uh, is uh, involved in some of the uh, volunteer things that he's uh, been involved in. So what I'm going to do is uh, turn it over to uh, Terry to talk about uh, some of the things that he's worked uh, together with Keith on. And before I forget, Elizabeth says to, to give all of you the best, especially uh, to Keith for this, because she's been uh, working on so many things with him. And uh, so she wanted to make sure that you were aware that she's wishing you good luck. So I'll turn to Terry. Sure. Yeah, as mentioned, Keith doesn't really toot his own horn, and so I'm going to toot a little bit for him, I guess, tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about just two things. He, oh, Keith's been involved in many, many, many things. Um, the first one is, as mentioned, we do these historical walking tours, and I got involved in it uh, 16, 17 years ago, and without fail, Keith and, of course, Barbara uh, volunteer frequently, and it's, I believe, knowing Keith a little bit, it's because of his love of the city and his love of the history of our city. And it's a great way to show it off is to do the walking tours. Uh, we're going to have to have a little meeting on how we're going to do the walking tour of the gazebo, because if any of you have been there recently, it's closed. <laughs> you, can't, you can't get to it unless you climb over the fence, but uh, because of the walk slide. <coughs> and Keith has always been there. Uh, as, a, as a great volunteer, and he helps to spread the word and keep the history of Data Point alive, which is really the mission of our society. The second thing might sound a little more mundane. Um, quick story, my, my brother-in-law was getting ready to retire, and he said, well, what do you do in your spare time? Uh, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, I'm 70, so I've never retired before. And I said, well, let me tell you one of the things that we did today that really was pretty neat. We went out and did inventories of curb stamps. <laughs> and he said, you did what? I said, if I really told you, I'd have to kill you. So I can't share the whole thing with him. And he looked at me kind of funny, like, you know, the Irish drink and who knows what they're doing in their spare time in Data Point. Uh, but it started as a project, Keith really spearheaded it, Doc Carlos, Rod Howard, uh, myself, and we went all over town, and I mean all over town in the Dana Point area, and looked at the stamps that are in the sidewalks. And from that emerged a neat pattern of how Woodruff developed that part of the city. As you can see where the 1927 stamps are, and the 1928 stamps, and Keith put together a little map. And it was really, really interesting to see how the city developed and grew, just looking at the inventory of the curb stamps. But then I went off my merry way, and Keith pursued it, as he does, and worked with the city committee to design the new curb stamps, the sidewalk stamps, I should say, that uh, are in the t city today in the Lantern uh, District. And that curb stamp that you see stamped in the concrete is a design that Keith did to commemorate that the town center was built out as, as Lantern District uh, in, and the stamp of the year and everything was a neat design. Keith's also spirited with the city to preserve many of the uh, stamps. It is part of our history, it sounds silly. You know, a piece of concrete that's part of your history, but it really is. And the, if you've never seen them, they're really neat. Right outside Bonjour Cafe, between there and that little gift shop that's next door, uh, is a really neat uh, thing that the city put together with a couple of benches, a couple of chairs, uh, with the old curb stamps in them, and a little, a little history that Keith worked on. And Keith does uh, so many things like that behind the scenes, and those are just two of them. So I thought I'd share that with you tonight. Uh, 
I just want to introduce Jeff Rosler, who was the first natural resources protection officer when the Native Nature Interpretive Center opened up. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, guys. It's an honor being here tonight. Appreciate everything that uh, you guys do for the community, and really appreciate Keith. And I, you know, it's going to be hard to follow up uh, whenever Terry speaks, but I'll do my best here. I, I must say, I was around um, at the Nature Center when Keith was out there inventorying those stamps. And wherever I go, whatever community I'm in now, I notice the concrete stamps. I go, wow, that's neat, that's really old. And look at, oh, that was a contractor who did this. So I appreciate that, you enriched my life that Keith. Um, so in 19, or 2008, the city put a call out for docents and volunteers that we needed at the Nature Interpretive Center. And Keith was one of the first four that made it up there. And he was one of the first four to make it through the rigorous background check. It was totally overkill. <laughs> and I was scared to put anybody through it because I thought that about three months down the line, they'd just walk away from the process. But Keith was one of the first four that stuck it out. He went through the original training um, and was there on Earth Day in 2009 when the city opened the new facility. And I think at that time, there was just four still. Yeah. Uh, and when we first opened. Um, we've grown that to, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60 um, people that have come and gone, and everybody's been great there, but Keith has been there since day one. And as Terry mentioned, you know, he obviously has a natural affinity for teaching, but he also has an affinity for uh, history. And I always, you know, it's called the Nature Interpretive Center, and we're supposed to be interpreting nature, but what a beautiful spot to interpret history as well. I mean, you can't move away from the natural resources. You got some great stuff up there, but you also have to respect the historical resources. And that's something we've always tried to do at that location and through our walking programs, and that's something that Keith has added to tremendously. So, really appreciate that. Um, and I know all the other civic duties he does around town. It's just a great honor to uh, work with them and remember them. So, for over eight years, Keith has put in over 700 hours mm. up at the Nature Interpretive Center. And I looked online today, and there's some nonprofit somewhere that values volunteer work. And they value that at $24.12 an hour. So, that's about $17,000 that Keith has donated to the city. So, fantastic. <laughs> Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Now what I'm going to do is uh, present a uh, proclamation and read this uh, to Keith. And it's especially uh, uh, close to me because I think we both share a thing in common. We both have very involved, strong wives. <laughs> we have, I think we commonly refer to them as she who must be obeyed. <laughs> and so we have a family together. So what I'd like to do is read the pro proclamation and it, it will pick up with some additional things that Keith is involved in. The Pat Plepler Citizenship Award. Whereas the Pat Plepler family established this award in her memory to recognize an individual or group that endeavors to make a difference in the quality of life and at a point. And whereas in 1967, Keith Johannes settled with his wife Barbara in Dana Point while still active in his career as a teacher of 49 years. And whereas Keith Johannes first became interested in Dana Point history after purchasing a 1928 Woodruff Hall in 1967. Whereas Keith Johannes instigated and collaborated on a sidewalk and curb stamp inventory recording, documenting and reinstalling curb stamps to, to preserve an important chapter in the founding of Dana Point's modern history. Whereas Keith Johannes has worked dilig diligently on the Dana Point Historical Society Preservation Committee as chair and liaison to the city to increase awareness and educate the public about historical inventory of residential and commercial property. Whereas Keith Johannes has volunteered at California Preservation Conferences for the past seven years, Keith Johannes has taken a leadership role involving historic photographs as consultant on the Lantern District Archway for the city of Dana Point. Whereas Keith Johannes has extended his love for his hometown as a member of the Earth Ocean Society, a volunteer with the Dana Point Symphony Orchestra since it began as, and as a pioneer docent of the Nature Interpretive Center since its inception in 2009. Whereas Keith Johannes has volunteered for the past 17 years on behalf of the Dana Point Historical Society. 
Therefore, be it now resolved by the Board of Directors and members of the Dana Point Historical Society that Keith Johannes be presented the 2018 Pat Plepler Citizenship Award in recognition of his active leadership and participation throughout our community. Well, you put it that way. It <laughs> sounds better than it was going through it, I think. But uh, yeah, it was, it was some, some memorable things. I remember the first time out in the Nature Interpretive Center, walking the trails, and one of the things we had to do was make sure people stayed on the trails. And I saw this guy off the trail, and I went over to him and said, you need to get back on the trail. I'm not actually that tough sounding. <laughs> but, he said, but well, we have permission to be out here. I was talking to uh, Joel uh, Weintraub, the, one of the most infamous bird watchers in the area. He had been given permission to go out and survey the public. So my first, my first bust was a bust. <laughs> but yeah, I do, I do want to, to uh, acknowledge uh, the great support that I've had from Barbara, my wife, and, and all, over all these years. Um, I kind of think of in terms of lyrics, you know, God only knows what I'd be without you. That's the only oh. thing like that. So, uh, there are a lot of. And she still considers me a work in progress, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and uh, thanks to all the friends that, that came tonight. And I, so many of you, and even coming from foreign countries. <laughs> So I uh, appreciate that. And uh, the part about the, the stamps, you know, it really tells you how boring my is <laughs> <laughs> to go around looking at stamps. But it really it has started to, to put together some of the history of our city. You notice that there are different stamps in different years, different companies were building them, and you could see the up ebbs and flows of uh, what was going on in, in the city of Dana Point. The, the big regret I have is not getting over to Capistrano Beach where we've lost a bunch of really historic ones over there. We still have some, we need to take a look and see where they are and, and try to preserve them because that's a Doheny, a whole other section of history within Dana Point. I kind of feel a little like the uh, lady in the Ikea, and start the car, start the car. <laughs> Let's get out of here before they realize what they've done. <laughs> but it, it, it truly is nice to see everybody and, and see Jim and Regina again to come back to the Dana Quinn Historical Society and all the other, uh, you know, and people I've worked with in the society who have motivated me, you know. Sandy and Carl Iverson with their work in Capstone Beach and, and uh, a number of people. Uh, and Marsha on double duty. We see each other here and then up at the Interpretive Center. And so it's, it's really great to... to uh, I, I actually lost the words. I don't know what to say, but I really appreciate the, this award. And uh, looking back at the people that have received the award, you know, makes me even... Uh, more worried about your judgment on <laughs> But uh, uh, that's about all I can think of to say. I, otherwise, I'll be here an hour and a half. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much, and Elizabeth too, who was getting ready two days after Christmas to go visit her mother in England, and was working on this right up to the day before she left. She came over and said, well, you have to sign it, you're president. <coughs> um, but they truly did all the work here. And Jeff, um, well, sorry, what? Whoops, I just stuck my foot in the uh, speaker. Tell us what your title is now at the city. Perfect. 
Okay, so he's now over all the parks, is that right? City parks. And so we're glad to have him back for, he was gone for a while, and then he came back to the city of Dana Point. And Bill Lamontre was our second mayor? Third. Third mayor. Second mayor, okay. So um, it's, it, it's so nice to have you still active in the Historical Society, and thank you for that. And Terry, of course, thank you for everything you do with the, with the stamps first in the past and the tours now, and just your support in general, and everyone's support in this room. So now, before we say good evening and to friends and all, please remember your dishes. Please don't take anything from the Lutheran Church that we didn't bring here. And uh, we'll see you in February. Have a good evening. Thank you. Can I get Terry and Jeff and Bill? Jeff?